I'm Tom Trowbridge, co-founder of Fluence Labs. Evgeny, another co-founder, is in the back. So if you've got very hard questions, ask Evgeny, not me. And um, we have Nadia also here helping orchestrate everything. So great to be here. Um, we're going to talk about Fluence. What is Fluence and why is it important? And echo some of the things that we've heard from other, um, other speakers as well. So Fluence is a decentralized serverless compute platform. And so what does that actually mean? And so first, I think there are a lot of words being thrown around and people even in this room will have different definitions potentially. So first, let's talk about what decentralized means. All right, and so it's very important we're on the same page on this because different people have different definitions. So for us, decentralized has three at least key attributes, but three are minimum, which is it's verifiable. And so that makes it trustless. That's a critical piece. It also is unstoppable and which also is another way of saying censorship resistant. If you are not censorship resistant, I'd say you're not decentralized. And that's a foundational premise. And you have to be fault, we also think fault tolerant. And these are not always, the, these are also not always um, the same things. You could be fault tolerant and still be subject to censorship um, and vice versa. So these are all attributes you need to have and we are um, focused on building. And what's a compute platform? A compute platform basically replicates the cloud stack. And so think of it as everything that you need to run applications besides storage, which we've, have, we've heard Sam from Arweave, um, and we've heard, obviously, know Filecoin well. Um, but you, gotta do, you need a lot besides storage to actually run applications. And that's what compute is. And so you know, what's, what's some more detail, and why are we doing this? And so what's our objective? The objective is to run arbitrary code without the limitations, without limitations, and with a similar speed and utility as the cloud, all right? That is a significant goal. So we wanna basically build the ability for people to run applications at the same speed as a cloud, but being decentralized. And that is a, when achieving that is significant. And so a couple more detail on sort of what we're doing. What Fluence does, it can run anywhere, on the edge, on your, um, on a browser locally. There's no consensus required. I'm gonna talk about this. It's highly performant. It's off chain, which is critical, and fault tolerant, secure, and importantly, it's compatible with, you know, multiple kinds of inputs or outputs, whether they be L1s or different storage layers. And so I wanna put this slide up quickly to make, to emphasize one earlier point about off chain versus on chain. And so in this ecosystem here, everyone considers um, by default blockchain. And yet key components of decentralization have very little to do with blockchain. We've got to take a step back and remember the first decentralized application of scale had nothing to do with blockchain and long predates Satoshi was Napster, right? So decentralization and decentralized applications predated blockchain. And one of the most successful scaled decentralized applications today is IPFS, which, or sorry, Filecoin, built on IPFS, which is also off-chain. It uses chain to validate, verify, and compensate, but it's actually off-chain. And so these are important. And so decentralized computing we have today, it's called smart contracts, works very well, um, and there's massive amounts of value which is transacted on it, but it has significant limitations, right? It's deterministic, it's constrained, it's expensive. So 99.9% .9 of the web runs on general purpose compute that's not suitable for blockchain smart contracts given their limitations. And that's what Fluence is trying to solve and has solved, is building um, arbitrary compute that is also decentralized and is not on chain. And so, you know, why bother? Why are we doing this? Like, what's, what are the benefits of this? Like, it's not just an exercise as a uh, academic experiment. There gotta be reasons. And so, there's a couple key reasons here. First, it's cheaper. And when you have decentralized compute marketplace, as we heard from Akash, it gets a lot cheaper. So that's point one. You want things to be cheaper. You also want to be free from cloud lock-in. When those cloud ecosystems are very easy and cheap to start, as we all know, but then as you scale, the pricing ramps up. So you want to be out of the cloud ecosystems if you can. You want to be censorship resistant, deplatforming resistant, and you wanna have innovation by being able to build without, being, without fear of your API or the API you build on being cut off or terminated. So we think you can actually enhance innovation dramatically with a decentralized, um, decentralized compute. 
So talk about a couple of these one at a time. So price, I don't have to spend too much time on this one. I think people kind of grasp that when you have a marketplace that drives price down. That's pretty clear. And so there'll be, we have a compute marketplace on Fluence. There's others you know, that exist and will exist, and that's great. We have a very clear um, uh, guide to follow with both um, Arweave as well as Filecoin. You know, the storage cost on Filecoin is about 1% of Amazon S3, right? So there's a massive, massive savings. And so when you combine the incentives of a marketplace, price automatically, almost automatically goes down. Next, cloud lock-in. You know, Amazon has terrific margins. They're growing significantly, as is Google, as is Azure. That money doesn't come from anywhere, right, from nowhere. That comes from all the applications, all the users that are, that are actually paying, whether it's directly or indirectly through higher prices to their customers for that. There is a lot of room for that margin to be given out effectively to consumers or applications. And so you, that is a, a key piece of what we're doing. Um, decentralized compute network, you know, there's no, with no switching costs because it's all open, that drives price down because you cannot lock people in. So whenever there's no barrier to switching, your cost and your price has to fall because there's, you, can't, you can't retain the people based on a higher price. And that is a critical piece of what we are building in wide cloud lock-in and eliminating cloud lock-in is so important. It's because of pricing. Next is deplatforming. And I think we've seen centralized companies get deplatformed, and you know, Parler is an example of that. And I don't think anyone here is weeping for Parler being deplatformed, but it shows the power of cloud compute in their 58, you know, terms of service um, agreement that can basically be pulled out from a company with very little notice. So, with a decentralized compute network, you cannot deplatform somebody. It's a decentralized network as long as there's any provider, any host willing to serve that compute compute exists, that application exists. And that is, that's, that's a critical component. Um, this is less talked about, but is equally important. Our whole ecosystem here has a deplatforming risk. The secret of Web3 is most of Web3 applications rely actually on centralized APIs and rely on Amazon. And so, you know, Infura runs on Amazon, right? So this is something we don't like to talk about but we all need to solve decentralized compute because we are at risk the longer we run on Amazon. And all you have to do is pay attention to a guy named Gary Gensler to know that we all run risks given regulatory, regulatory regime. And so getting in a decentralized um, ecosystem is critical. The other point is the centralized backends of dApps also exist where they can run it in-house. They may not be on the cloud, but they may run the server themselves that has all kinds of other risks and certainly isn't decentralized. So um, the last kind of point here on the centralized compute kind of flaws is the innovation it prevents. And so some people here may remember, you used to be able to build applications on top of Twitter. You used to be able to build on top of Facebook. That led to lots of interesting applications. Those are all shut down. When you can't build on a centralized um, company, or you, you can't because you can be cut off at any point, with decentralized compute, those applications run and you can't be turned off. That inspires a terrific amount of innovation because people are free to build knowing they won't be cut off and can't be cut off. That is an innovation accelerant, which we can't really forecast what that means but we know it's significant. Um, and these are the reasons why we think we decentralize serverless compute is the next iteration of compute. We started off with mainframes, then over a decade or two, we've moved to the centralized cloud, and that's been an enormously lucrative and enhancing move across multiple ecosystems. But the next web is the decentralized serverless, um, decentralized serverless compute platform, and that's where we all go for the reasons I've mentioned. But why aren't we there now? And why hasn't this happened? It's because it's hard. And why is it hard? It's hard because you want to have generalized compute capability with verification and being scalable. And those three things are very hard to do, which is why, um, they've, for example, you have verifiability on blockchain, but you don't have scalability and you don't have generalized compute capability. You can also have central, you also can have generalized compute capability easily decentralized, but with no verification. That's also not ideal. So putting and wrapping these three things together is what you need, and that's very hard. 
And so we've solved the um, verification without blockchain through a variety of different methods I'll, I'll mention, um, what I'll talk about in a minute. But these are, this is why it hasn't happened so far. So we, our solution has two pieces. There's a developer platform and there's a computing marketplace. And you need both of these things to work. And importantly, it's not just the compute marketplace or just the developer platform, it's a comprehensive solution. And so first, what's the developer platform? And we basically built a decentralized version of the AWS and the cloud stack. And so that allows native composition of decentralized applications completely free of the cloud. And so it's not a computing marketplace where you rent a server somewhere else and run your application. This is actually the, the code that allows you to compose applications natively in a decentralized manner. Um, and that is, a, you can see the different pieces here, but these, all these have been, have been written and are, are complete. And the next piece of this is the computing marketplace. And I think everyone here knows the computing marketplace. You understand the price discovery elements of it. This is, I think, you know, pretty powerful. We think this is, for us, it's not about laptops connecting. We think, um, not unlike Akash, that data centers that are not you know, Amazon scale will participate in these types of marketplaces. We also know there's a terrific amount of compute capacity at some of the storage providers that is unused that are real potential partners as well. So we're confident in the ability to find this compute, this unused compute that's not kind of retail necessarily compute. Um, and we think that is the, the real solution to how you build a decentralized computing marketplace. This I want to put in because this is what makes it all work. You need to have verifiability and incentives. And so first, there's, there's three pieces to this, but proof of processing, the Aqua proof basically um, proves that the verification of execution has happened. Every step along a compute um, path is verified. That's very, very important and allows decentralization to work and people have confidence in it. There's also proof of execution, which um, is another piece of this. And then the, the last piece is actually proof of compute capacity. So again, like some of the storage providers, we've built a, basically a protocol that allows um, you to demonstrate and prove you have compute capacity, you've added to the network, and be rewarded for that. And so we think that is a, another element and a way to jumpstart the network and get compute capacity onboarded. And so where are we in this and what have we done so far? So Testnet's live, decentralized execution protocol Aqua is written, functioning. Some people here have, have used it and played with it. This 2023 is a big year. Fluence has been around since, um, since 2017. So I've been building for a long time and have raised 15 million over that period of time. But this year we're gonna launch a DAO. Um, Mainnet is scheduled for Q4, um, verifiability, and then the compute economy will be live this year. And in 2024, probably early in the year, we're adding a couple of languages and also the ZK proofs. So that is, um, that's, that's the core of what Fluence is. So thank you for paying attention. And I think the main point I wanna mention is that like the web, when Tim Berners-Lee was starting it, he didn't know exactly what would happen. He knew that if he opened up these types of hyperlinks, innovation would come, right? He didn't, couldn't predict what happened. And we think the same thing about Fluence and about compute. When we open up compute, allow people to build on each other in a permissionless and trustless way, we can't predict exactly what will happen, but we know it will be big and powerful, and we also know we need to do it, And if we, because if we don't, we're subject to Amazon and Google for the rest of eternity, which is not what we want. So, thank you.